So for ionic compounds, we have a compound where we have a metal and one or more non-metals. So we can look at the periodic table and see that we have metals, those are the ones in the blue, and then the non-metals, those are in the green. So for something like CaCl2, calcium, that's a metal, and then chlorine, that's a non-metal. Metal plus one or more non-metals, that's going to be an ionic compound, and it's going to have ionic bonds. For FeOH, we can see that Fe, iron, that is a metal, and then both oxygen and hydrogen are nonmetals. So we have a metal and one or more nonmetals, we have an ionic compound. Finally, for Na2O, we have Na, which is a metal, oxygen, that's a nonmetal, and we have an ionic compound. So press pause and look at the items below and determine which ones are ionic compounds. For SO3, S, and O, those are both nonmetals, so that can't be ionic. In fact, that's called covalent. For NaBr, Na is a metal, and then Br, that's a nonmetal, metal plus nonmetal, that is an ionic compound, and it has ionic bonds. For K2O, K, which is potassium, that's a metal, and then oxygen's a nonmetal. Metal and nonmetal, that's ionic. Then for Fe, Fe is a metal, but it's just Fe, it's not bonded to anything, so it's not a compound and it doesn't have ionic bonds. So Fe is just an element. Often you'll see that you have a metal like Na, Al, or Ni bonded to a number of nonmetals. In that case, that is going to be an ionic compound as well. So to wrap up, if you have a metal and a nonmetal, or more than one nonmetal, you end up having an ionic compound. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.